Donovan Darius, former 10-year NFL player, professional life strategist, and motivational speaker, and also author. And I am a lover, a lover of a being an inspiration of hope and a messenger for all people in all nations. And so I'm coming to you today on this segment right here as one of the segments I do, which is a spiritual motivation. And during this time, my whole purpose is to do this. My purpose is not to tell you what to do. It's not to tell you what to think, and it's not to tell you what to believe. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share a perspective. I'm going to share some insight. I'm going to share maybe a story or so. And in that, my desire and my hope is that it relates to you in a way that there's something that you hear me say. There's something that you're inspired by why I'm speaking that you can apply to your life and you can help encourage others. And so during this spiritual motivational segment, the title of this one is The Power of Compassion. And during this time, I'm going to read a verse from the Bible, and I'm going to actually make it very practical so that you can get it. See, oftentimes, I remember, as I shared with you guys before, I grew up in church, right? And I just like being in the garage don't make you a car. Going to church don't make you a Christian. Holding the Bible don't make you a Christian. Knowing some songs don't make you a Christian. And so at the end of the day, it's really about how do I apply what I know and what I heard and make it practical to my life to make a difference in the lives of other people. And so that's the power of the Word of God. And so I'm going to read a scripture today in this segment right here. And again, if this is your first time, I want to welcome you. Uh, these videos that I create in the morning, afternoon, wherever, a lot of content is on my YouTube page. So check it out. Donovan Darius, you can definitely check it out there. I have a lot of other things, some mindset motivation, spiritual motivation, you name it. Uh, just some things for us to kind of connect uh, as you're taking your life to the next level. So the scripture that I want to talk about today is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And this is what it says. It says, Praise be to, God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. You see, this scripture right here has a very personal meaning to me. Because oftentimes when we go through life, we may not understand why we're going through something. We sometimes go through seasons and patches of our life where we look like, man, the world is crushing down on top of us. It seems like I can't take any more. It seems like everything is happening, whether my physical, my financial, my relationship, whatever it may be. There's times in your life that you're going to go through these seasons. And in those moments, what we need most is not somebody to come along and tell us, oh, how bad we are or what we're being punished. But what we need more than anything in those moments is compassion. You see, compassion in this word, in this root word, basically, basically means the passion means to suffer with. The suffer with and the suffer for. The com compartment, the COM, is the company part. So that means that somebody is coming alongside, willing to suffer with you, willing to be with you, willing to help you, willing to you know, encourage you as you are going forward through your periods of time. And so when you look over your life and you start looking back, and I want you to think about right now, what are some things that you've experienced in your life that it had not been for somebody else coming alongside of you? You wouldn't have made it. If it had not been from the help, the prayers that were going up for you or the people that came alongside and said, listen, I'm here for you, you're not alone. What are some of those things that you might have went through? And so there's a power in compassion. And this scripture where it says, Praise be to God. Praise be, be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. As I break it down, our Lord Jesus Christ is basically meaning this. Hey, Jesus Christ was a man. He was a God man. He was sent here on this earth to do an amazing thing for us. To exercise compassion. To understand that in and of itself, we are, we are a fallen creature. That means we make mistakes. That means that we're going to miss the mark. That means that we're going to sin in our life. And all sin basically means is that we're going to miss the mark of perfection. And because of that, God sent his son. God sent him to be the propitiation, the payment for our penalties for the things that we do wrong. But more importantly than that, God wants us to give us back the relationship that we had from the very beginning of time. And so when it says, praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's basically saying, you know what, the Father of the one who did it all for us. 
Praise be that father. That means the father means source. Father means sustainer. Father means structure. Father means infrastructure. Father means foundation. Praise the one who has it all. It's basically saying, you know what? We may be limited individuals, but we want to go to the person who has everything. The person who has all that we ever need, more than we can ever desire, more than we can ever dream of, more than we can ever imagine. We want to recognize that person. And so when we have something that we need in life, the, this, this first scripture talks about praise be to God, the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we're coming to the Lord, as we're coming to God, as we're coming to the one that owns it all, the one as we're coming to the one that knows it all, he's basically saying, praise be to God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of of compassion. As I mentioned, the word father, I did a Father's Day celebration about a month and a half ago at the stadium. We had over 450 families sign up. And, this, and, the, and the message and the theme of it was the, taking fatherhood to the next level. And in that message, I talked to, I shared with the families about the power of fatherhood and what does it mean to be a father? And as I said, this, it means to be the infrastructure. It means the, the identity. It, it, it means to, you know, it means to be the foundation of your family, of your neighborhood, of your community. And so when it says the father of all compassion, is letting us know that compassion starts and begins and ends with God. And so we go to the one who has the compassion. We go to the one who started it, who is, who is unlimited in the ability to comfort us as we go through. And so it says, praise be to God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our troubles. You know, I remember when I go through life, when I went through a period of time in my life, and I kind of share it often, you know, when I was transitioning throughout life and transitioning from the league um, and different parts, man, I remember I went through a bad, I went through a tough season, a tough season where I didn't know if I was coming or going. I mean, and, and everything in my life, my relationships was, was kind of twisted, you know, I mean, my finances, my mind, my physical body, you name it. And at those moments, I needed somebody to come alongside of me. And at those moments, I didn't exactly understand exactly why I was going through it. My first inclination, my, my first thought was, you know, maybe I'm being punished for something I did or something I didn't do. You know, I started asking all around people, trying to ask why, why, why is this happening? Why am I going through this? What do I need to do? Is there something I need to do? And I didn't quite understand. You see, there's some seasons in your life. There's some times, there's some moments, there's some things that you're experiencing right now that you don't understand exactly why. But this passage continues to go on and says, you know, praise be the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who comforts us in all of our troubles. See, no matter where you find yourself at right now, I'm here to remind you that God is comforting you. God wants to comfort you. God wants to be that peace. Guess what? God is not like man. God doesn't say he's going to do one thing and don't do it. God is not going to disappoint, disappoint you. God is not going to basically make you have to jump through hoops to give you the to give you the love and to give you the restoration and give you the support that you need. God is not going to do that because God is the author. He's the foundation. He's the very source of the compassion. He created it. You were created to be loved. And in order for love to be loved, it has to give it away. And so when we look at this and we understand that we go through times when we go through troubles, just know this, that God says, listen, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll comfort you in everything you go through. He says, you know what? And when you go through, when you go through the rivers, he says, I'll be there with you. Yesterday I talked about a scripture and I went through another spiritual motivation. You can check that out. And God says, you know, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you go through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. He says, when you go through the fire, it won't burn you up. And so guess what? God allows us to go through things. But God also lets us know that he's going to be right there. He's going to be right there comforting us, helping us, knowing that we're going through. You know, I understand what it's like. You may have lost a loved one. You may have lost a relationship. You may have lost a job. You may have been disappointed. And I know the pain is real. But God is here, to, here today to remind you, to let you know that in the, even in all that, God is right there with you. He sees the tears. He hears them. He's holding you up even as you're crying, even as you're hurt, even as you're going through the pain right now. And so as it says, blessed be the Father, God, the Lord of Jesus Christ, who comforted us in all our troubles. Watch this. Watch this now. He says, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. See, when I read that scripture, it made sense to me. It basically said, you know what? 
You know how some of those times you don't understand why you're going through what you're going through? And I heard somebody say, and I can actually testify to it, that sometimes the things we go through are not just for us, they're for somebody else. Let me repeat that again. Sometimes the things we go through are not just for us, they're for somebody else so that we can understand what they're going through when we, when we approach them and when we interact with them. I'll give you a case in point. I share with you about the moment that I was going through. And this moment was so tough for me that I didn't know whether, like I said, whether I was coming or going. At the moment, I was going through depression. I was, I was having anxiety. I felt suicidal. I felt all this stuff. Now, granted, I'm a man of faith. Listen, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in heaven. I believe in hell. I believe that man got, you know, we're here with a purpose. But I also realized one thing, too. I also realized that pain, you know what I'm saying, that people that commit suicide, they're not trying to commit suicide because they want to die. And a lot of times people commit suicide because the pain is so much that they'll be willing to do whatever it can to get rid of the pain. You see, I was there before. I know what it was like to have your mind just feel like it's rushing against you, to have your heart racing and not knowing whether you're coming or going, to see everything around you and not understand everything and wondering, is this going to be the end for me? I know what that's like. I know what that's like. You see, that's where the power of compassion comes. The ability to empathize with someone. The ability to walk with someone. So watch this. As I went through that season of my life where I felt like I couldn't say anything positive. You guys see me now. You hear me talking now. You see me always putting on videos and all this stuff. You see the energy. Well, guess what? That came because I went through my valley. Because I went through my season. Because I went through my journey. Not because I avoided it. Not because I escaped it. But because by the grace of God, I went through it. And I thank God that as I went through it, God was peeling off different things. Just as we talked about in the scripture yesterday, when God says, when you go through the fire, it won't ablaze you. You see, as I was going through my season, God was peeling off some of the things. He was burning off some of the things that I may have been trusting. Maybe I've been trusting my title. Maybe I've been trusting my just my job. Maybe I was trusting my finances. Maybe I was touching just my relationship. When God says, listen, man, listen, there's no other God, and I'll have nobody before me. Because God says, you know what? Anybody and everybody else can fail you. But God says, I'm not like man. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I want you to put your trust in me. And so during that season, God was burning that stuff off. And at that moment, I didn't know where I was coming or going. You know what I mean? I was up and down. I was trying to figure it out. And I didn't know why. But when I read that scripture, it really made sense. And especially the things that happened after that. And so as I was going through all those things, and as I started coming out, and what brought me out those seasons of my life was the power of prayer, was the very spirit of God, okay, the very spirit of God, the power of prayer, and me taking the steps and the commitment to move forward. Even though I felt I was blind 2020, okay, I felt, I felt like I was physically blind, but spiritually I had 2020 vision. That meant that I was leaning over to the very direction in which I was being led to move by the very word of God. And as I was moving forward, God began to be able to take the scales away from my eyes. I was able to see more, understand more. I was able to walk in more peace, walk in more understanding, walk in more love, walk in a sense of peace with God because I was understanding what God was birthing me into. And during that time, there were some people in my life that came alongside of me the power of compassion that were there to support me. My sister Felicia was there. My God, Mama, Mama Terry was there. My mom, Roberta Darius was there. My brother Eugene was there. You know what I'm saying? My pet, one of my pastor, Pastor Scott, Delk was there. And these people were there, just there to help me. They wanted to, they couldn't take it over for me, but I had to go through it. And so as I went through it, here's one of the most amazing things that happened. After I went through it, and thank God at the time, I didn't need medicine, I didn't need anything. All I needed to do, I needed spirit, I needed prayer, okay? I needed to understand the prayer and walk through with prayer. I needed to have the spirit of God through the word of God, and I had to take action myself. And after I came out of that, after God brought me through that valley, here's one of the most amazing things that happened. I get a call from the NFL. And the NFL, out of nowhere, they had no idea the valley that I was in. They had no idea the season I was in. The NFL said, they said, Donovan, we're about to create a program 
we're about to put together a group of 10 guys and we want to train and certify you guys as our specific our specific intentional transitional life coaches they said we want to train you in four areas and we want to bring the best of the best organizations to train you in these areas number one they said we want to train you in life transition skills so that way you'll be able to have the skills to help other guys as they're transitioning through life they said we want to treat we want to train you in relationship management skills so you'll be able to understand you know the different components of relationships and how to help people with their relationships they said watch this they said we want to train you in mental health first aid I'm like, what? mental health first aid they didn't know all what I was going through but they said we want to train you in mental health first aid and the fourth one they said we want to train you in in suicide interventional skills training I'm like what in the world they didn't have any idea what I was going through but God knows what I was going through and God was preparing me because as the scripture said, God who comforts you in all your troubles. As I was going through my season, God was comforting me. God was keeping me together. God was holding me together. God was giving me his word. And as I was meditating on it, as I was putting it before my eyes, as I was praying to God, as I was speaking to God through my prayer and listening to God through his word. And as he was doing that, and he put people around me to just encourage me on my journey. And as I was walking it out, okay, walking it out, being led by the spirit, just walking out what I thought was the best thing and was known the best thing to do God was comforting me in those moments because the scripture goes on to say so that God comforts you in your troubles and here's why he comforts you in your troubles here's why God comforted me in my troubles here's why God will continue to comfort you and anyone else in their troubles watch this he says so that you can now comfort those in any trouble with the same comfort that you yourself received from God thank you Lord and so it makes sense as I was going through my trouble as I was going through my season there were certain people around that were trying to define my season for me there were certain people that had limited understanding of what I was going through and sure they gave their input but there were strategic people that God had placed around me to help me understand a little bit what I was going through but more than anything it was the very comfort of God's word where God said, you know what, Donovan, there's no good thing I would ever withhold from you. That was something that comforted me. There was another one that, where God said, in, in the Bible, where, where God's voice, where his, his word says, you know what, Donovan, there's a season and a reason to everything under the sun. So that meant that this had a period of time. And then there was another passage that spoke to me that said, no, no weapon formed against you going to prosper. So that meant that the trouble I was going through, the, the uncertainty that I was going through, the, the, the kind of torment I feel like I was under, no, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper, ever. There was another passage that when it said that my plans for you, Donovan, are only good. They're not to harm you, but they give you a future and expected end. And that comforted me. Why did it comfort me? Because I couldn't see the end. All I could see and feel and experience was the issues and the problem and the pain and the hurt. But that plan that God says, you know what, the plan I have for you is not to harm you. It's to give you a future. I didn't know I had a future at that moment. But God said there was a future. So that kept me moving one step at a time. One step at a time. There is a future for me. There is another side of this. There is another side. Of, even when I couldn't see it, there's another side of this. He says, I give you a future and expect it. And I'm not going to get my plans or not to harm you. And so although, I'm, although I was in the process of the planning phase and walking it out, I received comfort from the very fact that the plan was not here to harm me. It was not here to destroy me. And so the comfort that I received during my time, God says in his word, he says that, he says that God comforted me. He comforted me first because he loved me. And he wants to make sure that as I'm walking around representing his name, and I'm representing his brand, that I can speak forth the fact that, yes, God is a comforter. See, this ain't something I heard about. This is something that I know. You see, there's going to be some things that, you know, there's going to be some things that, that you're going to be able to share with somebody that you're not talking about because you heard about it, you read about it, you saw it on TV, but because you've been through it. And see, because you've been through it, you are telling me to be able to help somebody else. You see, and so think about this. The valley I went through, God had specifically prepared me. He was preparing me, molding me, 
to go through it, to come out of it. Why? For the very call that I received from the NFL. And so now with the NFL, what do I do? Because I went through that, and because now they basically said, we want to train you, we want to certify you now. So now I can provide that same comfort that I was received. I can now provide it for somebody else. You see, at the end of the day, you guys, I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your valley is. I don't know what your, 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 your greatest trouble is right now. I don't know what that is. But here's what I am here to tell you. There's another side to that. And the same comfort that God promised that he said he would give me, he's given to you. And he has available to you. And then the very fact that God is allowing you to go through something because God is a God of purpose. And he says, I always begin with the end in mind. And because God begins with the end in mind and then he works backwards because of the fact that you're already starting a path, a season of, of trials and tribulation. That means because you're starting it, because you're a part of it, it's already an end to it. Because it started and because God starts here with the finish and he works his way back. Because it started, because you're feeling it, experiencing it, sensing it, seeing it, hearing it. Just know, feel comfort that there's an end to it. There's an end to it. And so if you hear it on the sound of my voice, you can rejoice knowing that there's an end to it. And the very fact that there's an end to it, there's a purpose to it. And as you go through it, one of the greatest purposes that I receive and that I want to encourage you today is the very simple, is the simple fact that God says, with the same comfort that he comforted you, he wants you to now comfort other people. The power of compassion. And so as you listen to this message today, my question to you is, what season are you in? Where are you at in your life? How has God comforted you? And have you realized that the fact that the same season that you went through, that chapter, is not here just for you. It's here for someone else. Whether you realize who that person is, just know this. If you haven't realized it yet, they're coming. And so my encouragement to you, go through your season. Go through your challenge. Go through your valley. Because there's somebody on the other side that is waiting to hear your testimony. Listen, I'm Donovan Darius. I'm a man who went through, who's going through, it's a go-to. And I encourage you today, live life to the fullest. Live life on purpose. Just know this, everything has a purpose and there's a purpose to everything. Continue to join me. If you guys like these videos, definitely go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check them out on YouTube. They're going to be up on YouTube as well. Make sure you encourage people with these messages as well. Listen, I'm about to get out this rain, man. Listen, the showers. Listen, the showers. You know what I'm saying? See, it was, that was so emotional. Even the heavens crying right now, and I'm getting wet. So listen, you guys have a good one, man. I hope you guys have a great day. Listen, if you, listen, post your comments. Subscribe. Hey, what did you get out of this? Did this message impact you? Share this message. Okay, thank you guys so much for joining in. I wanted to come in during your lunchtime break or whenever you're watching this to give you a little dose of encouragement for you today. Listen, you guys be blessed today, man. Be encouraged. I love you. God bless you all. In Jesus' name.